All right. Uh, I'm glad to see you back. This is part two of the, the compost tea brewer. So we've already kind of gone over the parts uh, of what's required, um, the basic setup, and the water. Next thing is basically going to be the compost. And like I said, the best compost is probably the compost that you make yourself. If not, you want to use multiple sources. So I just use this uh, one gallon paint strainer bag and all you're going to need in here is about two handfuls of compost. You don't need much. So it's not rocket science. You don't need to measure, measure anything. I just basically grab a big heaping handful, dump it in, another big heaping handful and dump it in. And that's, that's plenty. And then like I said, I put those two one inch air stones in there. I tie it up with some string and then I just put a stick across the top of the bucket and hang the, the compost right in the middle there. Um, and that'll, that'll get you going. And then basically we got the air going to uh, keep our um, bacteria and our fungi happy. And um, there's basically two types of bacteria. There's uh, aerobic and anaerobic. And aerobic meaning air, anaerobic meaning without air. We want to reproduce aerobic bacteria. So that's why we got the air stones and the air pump because it's going to keep those bacteria happy. And for the most part, aerobic bacteria are almost 100% good. There's a couple, um, you know, spiral bacteria that um, can be kind of bad, but you're not going to find those in compost. So we're not going to be reproducing those in here. Everything that we find in compost that's aerobic is going to be 100% good. Um, anaerobic or without air, um, it's going to be all your bad bacteria, salmonella, botulism, um, E. coli, stuff like that. So those grow in a, an oxygen deficient environment. So we don't want to mess with those. We're not going to probably find those in the compost anyways, but uh, they're not going to thrive in the oxygen rich environment. And then you have your, your beneficial fungi that uh, we're going to reproduce as well. So keeping the bacteria happy, bacteria can reproduce, you know, each one is a little bit different, but depending on the conditions and what type of bacteria, bacteria can reproduce like every six to nine minutes or something like that. So if you start out with a certain amount of bacteria in your bucket, six minutes later, you're going to have twice as many. Another six minutes later, you're going to have four times as many. Another six minutes later, you're going to have eight times as many, 16 times as many, 32 times as many. And you can see exponentially it goes on and on and on. So it doesn't take long to have these guys reproduce just a crazy amount. So it's all about keeping them happy. So we talked about the water source. We talked about the compost. Um, we talked about the different types of bacteria. And now we want to try to keep them happy and get them reproducing um, like rabbits in here. And the way to keep them happy um, and reproducing is to feed them. And the best way to feed the bacteria is with sugars. And the best source of sugar is just to go to your grocery store and get um, sulfur-free molasses. Um, and just use a little bit. More is not better. You know, sometimes when it comes to certain things, more is better. But uh, when it comes to feeding them, uh, you don't want to overdo it. One tablespoon of sulfur-free molasses in this five-gallon bucket is all you're going to need. And the reason why is if you overstimulate them or overfeed them, they'll reproduce like mad and you could actually get too many bacteria in your five-gallon bucket using up the oxygen that's in there to where there's so many, they use up all the oxygen that's in the water and now your water becomes oxygen deficient and it goes anaerobic and all that bacteria in there that you just spent that time making die off and now you create a bad environment um, to possibly where you can start doing um, growing some bad guys so you don't want it to go anaerobic you want to keep it aerobic so you don't want to overstimulate them and you don't want to brew it too long so um, and the re you know some of you may ask how do you know if it's gone anaerobic you got a built-in detector. Just use your nose. If you smell your uh, compost tea, it smells rich and earthy um, and like your compost, it's good. If it smells bad or rotten, it's gone anaerobic and it's bad and you're going to want to get rid of it. So feed those bacteria one tablespoon of molasses for the five gallon bucket. And then if you also want to concentrate and try to feed and grow beneficial fungi as well, um, some of the other things you can add is um, wheat bran or oat bran and I would add about 
I'd say half a cup to a cup of wheat bran or oat bran um, to your compost. And what that'll do is that'll feed the, the uh, beneficial fungi as well. So other things you can add to this that are really going to help out, you can add uh, liquid seaweed. Um, another good thing is fish emulsion. Um, I believe they come in two different kinds. You have to go to a nursery and ask them, but um, from what I read, um, and this is coming from um, Bob Webster, I believe. Uh, he's another guy down in San Antonio that works with Bruce Dooley. Um, they, you know, one guy hosts a TV show, the other guy hosts a radio show. He's been hosting the radio show for uh, almost 20 years now. He owns a nursery. So these guys know a lot, and uh, this is all. This information is basically coming from them. And um, Dr. Um, Elaine Ingram, um, she's basically the godmother of compost and compost tea and stuff like that. She used to uh, work at the university, or Oregon State University. Uh, she's branched out into her own company. Um, you can find her on the web at soilfoodweb.com, I believe. But uh, if you just Google her name, it'll come up. But a lot of this information comes from um, them. So according to what I found was you want cold pressed fish emulsion. So I don't know how you determine that. I do have some fish emulsion, but it doesn't really say on there if it was cold pressed or not. So I think it just has to do with the process um, of how they make it. And maybe if they do it um, with heat, it kind of destroys some stuff. So maybe you want the, the cold pressed stuff um, with some more microbes and stuff like that in there. Um, and then basically you let this thing brew depending on the temperature. I'd say about 55 degrees um, or cooler, and that's just the outside air temperature. I'd let this thing go for, um, you know, 24 to, oh, I'd say about 24 hours. Um, well, you can go 24 to 32. I wouldn't go any more than 32 hours. If it's warmer than 55 degrees, I would definitely limit it to 24 hours. So, like I said, because the bacteria, the warmer it is, they'll reproduce faster. Same with the sugars. So. The hotter it is outside or the hotter your water is, the less time you want to brew and the less amount of sugar you want to feed them. Um, the colder it is, you can give them a little bit more. So best rule of thumb is just whatever you think, always err on the side of safety. Just do less uh, instead of more to prevent it from going anaerobic and then that way you don't have to worry about it and you're still going to have an awesome amazing compost tea. So like I said, I use this on mine. Mine got seven feet tall, 30 to 40 pounds of fruit off of these things and this is all I used was compost tea and compost. So um, that's basically the setup. That's basically what I use. I tried to give you guys as uh, much information as I could. I know I'm probably talking kind of fast here, but um, I know there's probably some things I forgot to cover as well, but that's the gist of it. Like I said, uh, you just want to grow those beneficial microbes, those bacteria, those fungi, get them reproducing, and uh, get them in your garden. Oh, the other thing too is once you brew it, use it. Use it as quickly as you can. You know, I'd say within two hours. Um, so you don't want to take away the oxygen source and let it sit around for a couple days or whatever. You want to use it right away. I just dump mine straight onto the garden, um, you know, through like a watering can. Uh, you can put it in a sprayer if you want to cover a large area. Um, you know that they say five gallons of compost tea um, diluted five to one covers one acre. So unless you have a huge garden, this five gallons is going to go a long way. So most of us gardeners are only going to need about a gallon of this compost tea on our garden. But you can't overdo it with compost tea. You're not going to burn anything. You're not going to hurt anything. So you can brew your five gallons and dump all five on your garden and you're not going to hurt anything. So um, go check out uh, my Facebook page, facebook.com slash gardenfrugal. I, ro I run uh, weekly contests and as soon as I get this video up and going, I'm going to be posting another contest. So go like that page, check it out, check out and uh, look for the contest information and uh, maybe you guys could win something. So until next time, know your limit and grow within it. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.